Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall and this is episode 5 of the Scratch Build series. In tonight's video I am going to look at installing the window frames on the house and the shop and the door front and back. If I have time we'll start looking at the shop window itself but I think the work on the windows and the doors may be enough for tonight's episode. So let's get on with what um, what we need to do. We're going to be using two different products tonight. Uh, both of them are the Plastruct um, square rod and the first one which you're going to use the most of is, uh, that's not the right one, this is it here. Um, this is one millimeter square Plastruct. I'll add that into the link at the in the description for you um, should you wish to buy it and then the second one is it's another square rod this time it's 0 0.030 which I think must be um, imperial measurement but it's just underneath uh, one millimeter let's get the other one there about half millimetre, per, no well not even half millimetre so those are the two that we're using and what we're going to be using the larger one for is to create the actual window frames itself and the door frames too and then we'll use the smaller one to create the bar across the centre of the window so first up I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one window uh, for you now to show you the process and then it's just a matter of repeating that process for all uh, seven windows on the front plus the, the one at the side and the two at the rear there's slight difference in between those you can see them actually there now um, in the back window it's just going to be a single frame going right the way around uh, there's there's not really any space there for a bar to go across and then on the end window we'll have gone for something slightly different rather than a bar across the centre we will uh, do it sort of, you know, to the top third, um, bearing in mind that this is a bit of an extension and perhaps a slightly more modern window was put in, you know, on the cheap sort of thing. So that's that one. But right, let's concentrate on the front window. Now, to make the task a little bit easier for uh, applying the frames, first of all, add a little bit of masking tape in behind and this is just going to um, sort of create a barrier that the window frame doesn't go right the way through the other side just makes it a little bit easier to work with okay so we'll put that in first and then we need to measure now it doesn't matter which way you do it, you can do vertical or horizontal first but we need to make a measurement of one section of the window. Lord, I can't see that. So in the case of this window here we are 11.5 centimetres. So if we take our square rod and cut and try and just make that cut as straight as you can it would be handy to have one of those little cutting jigs for this having said that each window may just have a slight discrepancy in measurement um, so you could end up sort of you know changing that uh, little jig thing to cut it but what you want hopefully is that hopefully you can see that there I'm actually having to put a little bit of pressure on that now to push it down into place and that's good because what it'll do is having that sort of wedged in as tight as possible will sort of just give it a little bit of an added um, uh, protection from popping back out again you know at a future date so we'll need to glue that now into place and we're just using the rocket glue as we have done on pre previous aspects of this build and I'm just sort of 
dropping it into the bottom area. I do find this stuff sometimes bubbles up, so I'm just using a bit of kitchen tile to clear that a little bit. And we'll put that frame back in place. And again, just push it right down until you feel it flush. And I'm also using my finger at the back just to make sure that it's running flush with the um, the back of the card. You know, just the, the, the masking tape's good, but obviously it still bends. So we just want to make sure that that doesn't sit too far over the back. And then once again, I will just try and clear off some of that excess glue. Okay, and that's the first one in. And so we need to repeat that for the other three sides. So once again, 11.5. And cut. We'll not measure it, we'll check the, the measurements this time. We'll just hope that it's right. If it's not, I'll take it out and give it a wee trim. Here's some of those bubbles away. Now in the meantime, while I speak about this, some of you are continuing with the build on the Facebook group, uh, both over at uh, the Model Rail Network Facebook group and my own Facebook page. If you haven't already shared any of your work, um, please post it up there. I would be really interested in seeing it. But Steve uh, has continued posting some of his progress. He found the uh, plastic card for the chimneys quite difficult to work with, but you know it's um, it's one of them things you just sort of get used to in time whenever you're doing these sort of projects. And also, well, it comes under Lines West, or Jeremiah Austin has also been building the kit, and he's actually gone for some variations on it. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's measure the, down the side. So now we're measuring um, between the two uh, frames, top and bottom. So what have we got there? 14, 14 and a bit. Um, yes, Jeremiah has uh, made a few modifications to the building already, um, has gone for um, a bit of stone um, cladding on his chimneys and I think on one side of the wall as well, um, which, which looks really good. Plus he also made that little end extension slightly different too, made it more with um, yeah, a wooden clapboard type um, finish to it and again you know, just shows that, you know, this kit or this scratch build, you know, can be modified in any number of ways. It's just sort of down to your own imagination as to uh, uh, what you can do with it. But, no, anybody else who's got something out there, please share it with me. I would love to see it. <coughs> so pop this other one in here and as you can see as well I'm just using the craft knife I'm using the um, the tweezers just to get it put, put into place and then with the craft knife I'm just sort of angling it down into position and making sure it's nice and flush with the side of the wall now you may well find I think it's the case for this bit here that the uh, yeah, you can hopefully just about see it. Um, the frame's quite narrow on this side. Um, so it just shows that there's a little bit of an overlap of the sandpaper. But no matter, you know, these things aren't necessarily going to be complete perfection. Um, and in the overall scheme of things, will probably barely be noticeable. So that's three sides on. So we'll finish the fourth one before we do the center bar.
think I've made this one too big in the cut. No, that one's too big, so it needs to come out and we'll do a wee trim on it. Nearly better to have it cut too long, because obviously we can get rid of some of the excess easier, or else we're just having to cut a whole new section of it again. So I'll just take... Should be enough now. That these windows won't exactly match what the prototype has. Um, there was a much more ornate uh, window frame on that prototype, but really, whenever you're working with such fine materials, I think it would pull your hair out if you had any hair, unlike me. Um, it would, yeah, it would prove a bridge too far. So that's the outer frame in. The next thing will be to measure across the centre, more or less, and that is coming in at nine, just over nine millimetres. And we're going to take our 0 0.030 square rod, and we're going to do a trim with it. Now with the case of this one, because we're gluing plastic to plastic rather than the rocket glue which I find is a little bit too runny I'm going to use the contactor, the Revel contactor and all we're doing is a little tip or a little bit of glue at the tip of each side and we'll try and centre that as best as possible Now if it's not 100% perfect centre, that's okay. We can live with a few wee discrepancies. And we'll try and do that as best we can. And make sure it's at least flush. It will sit a wee bit further back on the frame than the other one because obviously it is a bit smaller and it will just help add that little bit of detail. Okay, so that's all in place and what we want to do now before all that glue dries is to peel that bit of uh, masking tape off the back. Do it very gently in case you would pull some of the frame out. But it should come away. It's just pulling that centre frame out a wee bit. Ah, you've got... from that and we can just alter that center frame a little bit to make it sit properly in again there we are one window now you could add extra detail with another bar across the centre to denote that the window has been pulled up. We're basing this in the fact that these are the old, more the, the more old-fashioned sash style windows which either would well push down and leave a little bar at the top or slide up and leave a little bar at the bottom and I may well do that in one of the other ones just to give that effect. But that's the first stage and um, like I say repeat the same process for the other five, four windows along the top plus the two windows on the bottom level and then on the back it's a single frame on the two small windows the frame on this one and not necessary but if you want to add a bar across this side too I just felt whenever the bar wasn't there it looked a little bit gappy okay so 
I'll crack on with this and then we'll come back to you uh, at the point of installing the door frames and the door. Okay, so all the windows are now installed. Um, that's probably taken a good couple of hours to get all that done. Some of them go in much easier than others. Some of them, particularly the bars across the centre, can be quite fiddly. But, as I showed with this one here, the rest of the four windows on the top and the two in the bottom um, go in exactly the same way. You'll also notice that on the front and on the back I have fit the door frames um, as well and with the one at the front there's a small bar just at the top there and that's just um, to accommodate the transom window uh, which would allow extra light into the hallway. So it's time to move on to installing the two doors. We'll start with the back because it's the most straightforward. Um, what you'll need is uh, a sheet of plastic, plastic card. Um, this is just an off cut that I have, uh, white, brown, it doesn't really matter what colour you go with. And as you can see there, I have already measured out the dimensions of the door. So what you need to do is measure the actual entire portal because what we'll do then is we'll take that plastic card and we'll glue it to the back of the door frames that we've already installed. So I have measured that out and in this case it's 11, uh, 11 millimeters across by 25 high. You'll also see that I have drawn lines on this. For the back door we're going to make it um, you know, a timber panel, panel thing. So the lines there are to act as a guide because with this little tool here, which I think is some sort of pottery type scribing tool, I'm going to scribe each of those lines. And what that will do is give us a nice sort of indentation uh, into the plastic card so that whenever it comes to painting it, we'll be able to sort of apply um, a dirty wash which will then go into um, those lines. Now again not entirely necessary um, and in actual fact uh, where this building is going to be located on the layout nobody is going to see those back doors unless you sort of climb right round in to the back of the layout. <coughs> So you, obviously you'll not be able to feel that, but I can feel that there is an extra uh, level of, well it's, it's basically sort of creating that embossed sheet that we have in our brick, um, but doing it ourselves. I'm just going to run another couple of passes over that, I'd like it a wee bit deeper. Finally, before we cut this out, I have some of these wire brushes. Um, I bought them in a pack of three at uh, a hardware store, uh, and each of them have a different level of uh, stiffness to them. And I'm just going to give that plastic a little bit of a rub in the run of the grain. One, it'll clean out the strips of plastic that we have run through but it also just adds an extra roughness to the the wood that again when it comes to painting will hopefully be able to pick up a little bit of that texture so let's get that door cut out and put into place now you'll notice at this stage I haven't mentioned door handles uh, it is something that we will add um, but I think we'll probably have to do that in another video. Um, I'm thinking at this stage that as we draw to the close of the build, there's going to be little jobs, uh, little detailing jobs that I'll probably cover in one video on its own. So let's just check the uh, positioning of that.
that works perfectly. Um, hopefully you can see there, let's see if I put this ruler up to the bottom. I actually have a gap between the door frame and the base of the building. And I've done that on purpose, because what we will also do as a part of the detailing um, section is we'll add a little shim of plastic in underneath there to act as a doorstep. So again, it's just something else to think about whenever you're trimming out your framing. So let's get some glue. And we'll run that round the inside of the frame. There's no right or wrong way up to this, so we can just pop it into place. We'll just make sure it's level at the bottom at least um, and the lines are running vertically and that's our back door in place. You should be able to see just from that light with that little scribing that we've got the, the slight change in light and that's the indentations in the plastic card. So that's the back door. Uh, let's turn to the front. So the front will be cut out the same way and what I'm going to do first is cut out a plain plate piece of plastic and glue that into place and then I'll show you what we're going to do next once I have that done. Okay so the plastic has been added to the front door but what we want to do with this door is to make it a little bit more decorative. Now you could go out and probably buy some double O gauge doors that would fill this space entirely but as this is a scratch build we might as well try and do as much of it ourselves so to that end I have cut further strips of plastic that are 1.5 millimeters in width and what we're going to do then is to lay one on this side one on the, the left down the middle and then across top, middle and bottom as well to create that sort of panel effect that you get in a lot of doors. So it's a very simple process. What we'll do is we'll go right the way around the outside first. Um, let me see what measurement that is and we can trim that to height. I can't see that. Uh, what's that? 21, 21 and a, a half. Sorry, I hit the camera there. So we need two of those at 21 and a half centimeters. That's one. and we'll glue those into place and again we're just using the Revel contact to glue for this job not too much glue needed Actually needs a wee bit more trimmed off. It's just a little bit too long. 21.5 so 21 would have done it. That's annoying. Let's take that off again. Come on. Do that one by eye and hope for the best. And just use the blade to move it into position. And there's just enough recess in that door with the um, the door frames that uh, it still sits back a little bit. 
and don't want it flush with that front frame or else it all just looks like one one large door if you know what I mean okay so those two are in and then we'll do the top middle and bottom um, vertical bars and they are six and a half millimeters it helps just to have run uh, a long strip of this stuff rather than ha you know one long 1.5 mil strip and then we just trim away from that rather than try to sort of, you know doing each individual one um, one it makes the job a little bit quicker but also you're pretty much in ensuring that you have your little bars all identical in size right and then we'll do top and bottom first Uh, these are going to be fiddly. What on earth? Too big. What's wrong with my measurements tonight? Maybe that wasn't the right one. Maybe that was the off cut. Nope. Goodness me. Right, we need to trim off those. Let's try that one. Hey, 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 this modelling lark is never easy, is it? That's too short now. Come on, Chapman. Right. This is a... This is a warts and all video tonight. With all the little errors in place, but sure part and parcel of it isn't it there's no way that I do everything right first time and I don't imagine there's a modeler out there that does There we go, that's better now. So that's the top one. I probably should have measured off all these other ones before and done them all at the same time, but too late. That's the bottom one. And then I need to cut another one here because I lost trim too much off the other one, so we'll go six mils in that one. Right, we're trying to get that as central as possible, but it's not totally central. As close will be just fine. Okay, so that's three of them. And then the final piece is now to measure the vertical bar in the center, and we'll need two of them. So, what have we got? That's nine on that one. eight and the other so it's too high up so if we move it down a wee bit we 
maybe it would have helped to draw and measure lines in this before I started doing all the cutting. Sorry, I can't get that into shot. Eight and a half. And eight and a half. Bingo. And hopefully I have enough plastic card left here to do this. I don't want to have to cut another strip. Eight and a half. One. Just enough. Do you believe it? Two. And we'll run a wee drop of glue down the centre. And pop them into place. And once these are painted up, in actual fact, once you get the glue, let the glue dry, if you use a little bit of the wet and dry sandpaper, it'll help just sort of clean up any little excesses of glue that would be there. And then we'll drop a paint on it. Nobody would be any the wiser. So there you are. Let's see if we can catch that in the light. That's not too bad looking, is it? So that's your front door. Once again, we need to add a door handle to this, but we'll do both door handles at a, at a different time. This video is running on at the 30 minute mark again. Um, so that'll complete us for t um, this week's episode. So we now have the doors done, the windows done, front and back, and on the side. What I will do now between now and the next video is I will paint uh, the window frames will just be done in a matte white and the doors I'll actually have to check back to the prototype the frames may be white but certainly the doors will be painted in the same color as the moldings around the rest of the building and then I'll apply a little bit of a wash just to weather them up a wee bit um, Unless actually you want me to show you sort of applying that wash, what I'll, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just do a, a standard paint on it for now, and then at a later date, whenever we're doing the weathering of the actual building itself, we can look at doing the doors too. But that's it for this time round anyway. Next week, we're going to concentrate on the shop window. That'll probably take up most of the time because it's, there's an awful lot of layering up of bits of plastic card to give the effect that we want to go with. So we'll look at that and only that next week. If by any chance we have an a little bit of extra time, it will be on to looking at uh, applying the roofs to the building. Um, I may be able to start on the, the gable or the extension one, but the, uh, the main one needs a wee bit of work on it, so we'll probably look at that as a separate video as well. But look, there we are. Uh, thank you very much again for watching. Um, I hope it's been of some use and of interest to you, and I will chat to you again on this build in a fortnight's time. Chat to you later.